Peter, I think it's time for finance. So a group of five grade 12 students who are currently taking mathematical literacy at their school are interested in investigating the prospect of running a taxi service between Franschhoek and Paul. Now for those of you who don't know very much about geography, let me put you out your misery. If you go off to Cape Town and you're traveling from Joburg, you'll be traveling on the N1. Okay? Before you get to uh, Cape Town, there's a little town called Paul. Wonderful little town. Fantastic town. Very far from Johannesburg. That's why I made my mother move, mother-in-law move there. Okay? So she lives in Paul, we live in Joburg. So Paul is just before Cape Town. Now, but close to Paul, about 25 kilometers away from Paul, there's the beautiful little town of Franschhoek right between the wonderful mountains and that's where most of South Africa's wine comes from okay so here we've got five grade 12 students and what they're wanting to do is to start a taxi service between the two little towns between Franschhoek and between Paul okay got the idea let's move on the vehicle they are considering to buy can accommodate 16 passengers please take note folks that's 16 passengers so it's the driver plus 16 the students are trying to work out how much money they will make on each single trip. It is decided that in order to compete against other taxis, they can only charge 8 Rand per person. Okay. Using the table below, calculate the answers for A, B, C, D and E. Right. This is kind of easy, isn't it? Because we now have our taxi and our students say, listen, so there's so many other taxis here. We want people to get into our taxi because we want to make some money. So what we're going to do is we got to, our prices have to be rather competitive. They got to compete with other taxis. No good us charging 20 Rand per trip and the other taxi charges like 8 Rand. No one's going to get into our taxi. So they say the best thing we're going to do is we're also going to charge 8 Rand. So let's look at our table. You can see here from our table that one person is going to cost us 8 Rand. Well, if one person costs 8 Rand, how many people cost 40 Rand? So what we're going to do then is we're going to say, well, how did I get that 8 to become 40? Well, I took the 8, I multiplied by 5, so 8 fives are 40. Now, if I did it here, I'm going to do the same thing here. What is 1 times 5? It's going to be 5. So I know my answer to A is 5. Easy? Next one. How much money am I going to collect if 8 people are in my taxi? Well, if 8 people are in my taxi and they're each paying 8 Rand, I'm going to collect 64 Rand. How many people if I've got 88 Rand? Okay. Well, 88 Rand divided by 8 Rand is going to give me 11 people. Sure. Now I'm taking 120 Rand. So if I've got 120 Rand and each person cost me 8 Rand, how many people are actually getting into this taxi? So, we are going to try and find our calculator because that's kind of a big sum. So, we're going to say, right, I've got 120. I'm going to divide it by 8 Rand because every person cost me a Rand. 15 people are going to be in my taxi. How much money am I going to make if there's 16 people in the taxi? Well, that's easy. We're just going to say 16 multiplied by 8 Rand, and that gives me 128 Rand. So there it is there. Right? 15 Rand, get 120 Rand. 16 people gives me uh, uh, 128 Rand. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Now, please understand, hey? Nowhere in your matric syllabus... Um, have we actually taught you that specific problem? But your teacher throughout the year is going to, well, hopefully they're going to teach you certain concepts. And those concepts need to be applied. So we would have taught you, well, if one thing costs 8 Rand, how much is 5 things going to cost? Okay? If one thing costs 20 Rand, how much is 10 things going to cost? Now we're taking that bit of information that you've learned, we're taking those facts, those skills that you've learned, and we're now applying it to a specific scenario. 
Please remember, at the end of the year in matric, when you see your exam paper, you might come across a scenario you've never ever studied in class. But the examiner is going to cleverly have taken all the skills you've learned and they're going to check those skills through this new scenario. All right, let's move on and let's see what our next question says. Now, our five students, they estimate that their expenses uh, or the expenses to be as follows for each single trip. So they're going to say, right, we're using three liters of petrol every time we travel from Franschhoek to Paul or from Paul to Franschhoek. Okay, it's a relatively uh, flat drive. That for those of you who've been to that part of the Cape will know it's a kind of flat road. So whether we're going from Paul to Franschhoek or Franschhoek to Paul, our petrol is going to be more or less the same amount. Five students say, oi. We worked out we're going to use three liters of petrol. So we're using three liters of petrol. Every single trip, we're going to pay the driver 30 rand. We're going to say, that's your fee, pal. No matter how many people are coming on the bus with us, we're going to give you 30 rand. Then the maintenance of the vehicle, these guys very clever say, you know what? It costs money to run a vehicle. And because it costs money, every single trip that we do, we're going to take 15 rand and put it in a special account so that if our bus needs a service or something goes wrong we got some money you got that so every trip three liters of petrol every trip they pay the driver 30 rand and every trip they take 15 rand and put it in a special fund got that indiana how much money do you put in your fund every time you take a trip <gasps> oh my gosh okay well to be honest i don't really put money away but i do have naming no banks i have a thing when i swipe my card it saves 10 rand, so, so it's inadvertently saving without me actually having to put it in a way. What in your is that the same thing? Is what, that the same thing? What she's trying to tell you is that she doesn't plan at all. Okay. <laughs> so let's move on. Now, our question is, if the price of petrol is currently 6 rand 43 per litre, oh my giddy on, this question comes back from some years ago. Because if we paid that for petrol now, we'd all be doing backflips. I'd even do a backflip. And that's quite something to see. Okay, so if the price of petrol is 6 rand 43 per litre, determine their total cost for the trip. So let's go through this. Now, we have certain expenses. The first expense is my petrol. How much is my petrol going to cost me? Let's go straight to our calculator. And we're going to say this. It's three liters we're using, and each liter costs six rand forty-three, which comes up with a total then of nineteen rand twenty-nine. So I'm paying nineteen rand. Uh, let's get a pen here, shall we? There we go. I'm paying nineteen rand. I'm going to try again. Let's go for it. Uh, there we go. Nineteen rand and twenty-nine cents for my petrol. My driver is an additional 30 Rand and the maintenance of the vehicle is 15 Rand. So I've got 19 Rand 29, I'm going to add my 30 Rand, add my 15 Rand and I get a total then of 64 Rand and 29 cents. So my expenses for one trip, 64 Rand 29. That means folk, before I make any money, I've got to get enough passengers to make 64 Rand and 29 cents. Once I've got my 64 Rand and 29 cents, anything after that is profit. Okay, let's move on. Have you remembered 64 Rand 29? Hold on. Let's go for it because when I move on, we move on. Okay. So, okay, next done. one. Now, how many passengers must be in the bus? before the trip is regarded as profitable. All right, so now let's remember, our cost per trip was 64 Rand 29 cents, and each passenger pays eight Rand for the trip. So eight Rand for the trip. If I now say, well, one passenger cost me eight Rand, two passengers 16, then 24, then 32, I'm still not there. So then we go up to 40, then we go to 48, okay? Then we're going up to 56, and then we're going on to 64. Ah, now, let's have a look at this. Eight passengers gives me 64 rand. Folk, that is absolutely fantastic. That means after eight passengers, I'm now going to start making a profit. Well, actually, that's wrong. And if that was your thought, you would not have got that answer right in the exam. Because 
eight people just bring me 64 rand. What were my expenses? My expenses were 64 rand. Let's have a look. Here it is. 64 rand and 29 cents. Okay. So if I got eight passengers, I'm short 29 cents. Now, if I 29 cents is not a lot of money. But it still means I'm at a loss. No matter how small, I'm still running at a loss. And the idea of my business is to run at a profit. Now, if I put a ninth person in, I'm now beginning to run at a, uh, uh, make, start making a bit of money. So I need nine people in my vehicle before I start making a profit. Okay? So I've got to get at least 70 2 rand. Okay, because 64 rand is just too little. 72 rand is too much, but that's okay. Once I've got nine people in, from then onwards I can say, phew, thank goodness, now we're running our business or our taxi at a profit. Right, so the students have no money to buy a bus. Feeling sorry for the students, a parent buys the vehicle for cash and only expects the students to pay back 5,000 Rand a month for the next 36 months, provided the parent can use the bus on Fridays and over the weekends. The students are excited, but they need to determine if they can afford this. So here are students, and you know you're a student. Imagine if you're a student and you're wanting to start a business, and you say, great, let's go out and buy a bus. Okay? And off you go and you get to the dealer and you say, here I am, I want a bus. And the guy says, fantastic, you just owe us like 400,000 Rand or whatever it is. And your whole heart crumbles, but I don't have that kind of money. Okay? And that's exactly what happened to our five students here. They went out, they went to buy a bus, and unfortunately for them, they didn't have the money. But fortunately, there was a parent. And the parent said, hey, listen, I'll buy the bus for you, but there's a condition. Condition number one, I get the bus on Friday and I get the bus on weekends. Condition number two is every month you pay me back 5,000 Rand. So we got to pay this guy 5,000 Rand a month and he gets the bus on Friday and weekends. In other words, we can only have our business running on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and a Thursday. That's it. Is it going to be worth it? Let's have a look. The students predict that they will be able to make 16 single trips a day. Trip number 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 and 15 are from Franschhoek to Paul and trips 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 16 are from Paul to uh, Franschhoek. And I think it kind of makes sense. If we're leaving Franschhoek and we're going to Paul, then we've got to get back to Franschhoek. And then we've got to go back to Paul and then we've got to get back to Franschhoek. So it's going to be uh, Paul, Franschhoek, Paul, Franschhoek, Paul, and we're going to do that 16 times. Okay? The students predict that trips 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, and 16 will be 100% full. In other words, there will be 16 passengers. Why do they predict that? They probably predict that because they're saying, you know, our first few trips are in the morning when everyone's got to get to work. And our last few trips are in the afternoon when everyone wants to get home. Okay? So we are going to be very busy in peak time, very busy in the morning, and very, very busy in the afternoon. Okay? Peak time traffic. Got it? So, my son has a wonderful joke. He's eight years old and his joke is, why is there peak traffic? And he says, because everyone leaves at the same freaking time. Okay? If everyone started work at a different time, we wouldn't have peak traffic. But unfortunately, we have peak traffic because everyone leaves at the same time. Fortunately for our five guys, that's also true. Going to be very busy in the morning, very busy in the afternoon. They predict that trips 5 and 12 will only be 87.5% full. Trips 6 and 11 will be 75% full. And trips 7, 8, 9 and 10 will be like 62.5% full. I wonder how they got these figures. And I can presume that what they did was they went and sat on, a, on the side of the road and watched how many people get into a taxi at different times of the day and wrote that down. Okay? And so they could take that information. So they've done quite a bit of research. And they've taken that information saying, now let's apply it to our business. These five students were obviously taught by me. They're very, very clever. Now, moving on. 
Determine how many passengers will be on the bus if it is 87,5% full. Folk, we're dealing with percentages. Now, 87,5%, so we write it as 87,5 over 100. Why over 100? Because we're dealing with percent. And if it's 87,5% full, what is a full bus? A full bus is 16 passengers. So we're trying to find 87,5% of 16 passengers. So let's do that. On our calculator then, we're going to say 87.5 over 100. And we're going to multiply that then by 16. And our final answer is 14. So we know that there are 14 people, let's get a pen again, there are 14 people getting on the bus for trips 5 and 12. Remember, for trips 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, there are 16 people getting on. How do I know that? Because we told that the bus is absolutely full. Okay, so there's 16 people. Let me write it over here. No, I'm not going to write it at all. Okay, so 16 people there, 14 people there. Trip 6 and 12, 75% full. We're going to do the same thing. Instead of writing 87,5, uh, I'm going to cross that out and I'm going to say let's make it 75. So it's 75%. Let's go to our calculator. I'm not even going to delete anything. All I'm going to do is say, right, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to change that to 75. 75% of 16 gives me 12. So I've got 12 passengers on trip 6 and uh, 11. Okay, so 12 passengers on that trip or on those trips. Trip 7, 8, 9 and 10 is 62,5%. So again, let's go back to our calculator here and let's change that 75 to 62.5. Uh, okay equals 10 passengers right so i have 10 passengers on trip 7 8 9 and 10 okay i think this person who set this paper is setting us up for a very very big question okay let's see what it's going to be here it is based on the information above show by means of calculations that the students are predicting to carry 220 passengers a day. Right, here comes the work. We said here there were 16 passengers. How many marks would that be for generally? That would be worth a whack of marks, eh? Um, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven marks, okay? But if they just asked this question, without having asked the previous question, then we're looking at a lot more marks. Okay. okay. You're absolutely right. You know, this is quite bad. There should be a mark allocation here. You're yeah, I like I, I like knowing what marks I'm gonna get. Then I always know how much how much effort to put in. Okay, okay. great. And, <laughs> and you know this is quite a breakthrough for me because this is the first time Indiana's learned anything from <laughs> anything I've said. Because I've always maintained a question is not a question unless there's a mark allocation. Okay? And uh, for the first time here we've come across a question that doesn't have a mark allocation and Indiana's picked it up and she's actually commented on it. I can't tell you how this has made my day. It's a revelation. Someone Somebody give me something Could to learn throw. something, which is really <laughs> great. All right, let's move on. Trip 5 and 7, 80% full, we said was? All right, hold on. No, I don't know what you're talking about now. See, uh, now I've just gone just, and let him down. This is just, all we, right, let's go. Was? 14. Will you remember 14, 12, yes. and 10? 14, cool. 12, and 10. Okay, but you must say, Indiana, remember 14, 12, and 10. 14, 12, and 10. Yes, I have right. it now. Peter. Now, let's see if we're going to how many passengers we're going to carry now this is a nice question because the examiner's given us the answer they've said hey he's going to carry 220 people just prove it so if i don't get 220 i've made a mistake let's have a look one two three four five six seven eight trips of 16 people so i have got 16 times eight plus i've got one two trips at 14 people. So 14 people on two trips. 12 people are going to be on uh, two trips, trip 6 and 11. So another two. 10 people are going to be on trip 7, 8, 9, 10, which is four. 
So all we got to do now is multiply that out and get an answer. And this is where I get nervous because I'm on live TV and I'm telling you the answer's got to be 220 and I'm really hoping it's going to be. So let's have a look. So let's clear our calculator and let's do the following. We're going to say I've got 16 times 8 plus I've got 14 times 2 plus I've got 12 times 2 plus I've got 10 times 4 equals, here it comes, drum roll and 220. Sure. Sigh of relief. So we know then that we are definitely carrying 220 people. There's our answer. Right. Moving on. Next question. Okay. My producer is shouting in my ears and is telling me that we only have another 10 minutes. And I haven't even got to simple interest or compound interest yet. Can you see how involved finance is and how much fun it can be? You can spend hours and hours and hours doing this. That's why I never understand students who say, oh, learning is so boring. Hey, I can understand if you're learning maths or geography or history or something like that. But if you're learning maths uh, literacy, it's never boring. It can't be boring because we're dealing with some fantastic stuff. Let's move on. If the students did manage to reach their target of 220 passengers and 16 trips a day, they calculated calculate the estimated profit for one day. Remember the cost of the trip is 64 and 29 and each passenger is paying 8 Rand. So let's have a look at this. We've now saying to you 8 Rand each passenger and we're hoping to carry 220 passengers. And that's going to give us a certain amount. Then from that we are going to subtract my expenses. And my expenses are 64 Rand for every trip. Sorry, 64 Rand 29 for every trip. And we're doing 16 trips. Okay? So we can now work out what our profit or our estimated profit could be for that day. So let's do that. So we're going to clear our calculator and we're going to say, right, I have 8 Rand times 220 Rand. Uh, let's just go back there to 20 Rand and I'm getting bringing in 1760 Rand. But I'm going to have to subtract my expenses, which are 64 Rand and 29 cents, and we're doing that trip 16 times. And our final profit per day gives me an amount of, there it is, oh my giddy aunt, 700, let's just get a pen here, 731 Rand and 36 cents. Imagine making a profit of 731 Rand and 36 cents a day and you're a kid. Okay, just remember there are five of you though, hey? You've got to divide it by five. So you kind of not quite making 200, in fact you're just over the 100 Rand mark, but still 100 Rand a day, that's phenomenal. Let's go to our next question. If the bus was to operate four days a week, remember the agreement, agreement on the loan for purchasing the bus was that the parent uses the bus on Fridays and over weekend. So determine the student's profit for a week. So we've got the 731 Rand 36 cents a day. We're going to multiply it by 4. And I'm doing it straight on my calculator because we're running out of time. And I'm going to get a profit now of 2,925 Rand and 44 cents. That's the profit I am going to make um, every single week. All right? Um, so profit for the week. We're moving on now and we're hoping to move on. Here we go. To be safe, the students work on a weekly profit of 2,500. So they're making 2,925 Rand a week, but they're saying, you know what, let's just play it safe because maybe someday not everyone rocks up. So we're working on a profit of 2,500 Rand a week. So let's go there to our calculator. We're going to say 2,500. We're doing it for four weeks in a month. We're just pretending they're four weeks. Some months have a little more than four weeks. Some months have just a little bit less. Okay. Do they have less? What are four sevens? 28. No, no month has less than four weeks. Okay. They all have four weeks. You see, it's catchy here. You, you're putting me off. All right. So <laughs> no, don't let me put you off. Just equals. carry on. So my profit now is 10,000 Rand a month. Okay. 
if they've got to pay 5,000 Rand for the bus, so we're getting 10,000 Rand from the trips, we're subtracting 5,000 Rand, our profit now is going to be 5,000 Rand. So we got a profit after paying all our expenses of 5,000 Rand. Now that's fantastic news because there are five of us, so each student is making 1,000 Rand a month. I wish when I was in grade 11 I got 1,000 Rand a month. That would have made a huge difference in my life. Right. Me too. Uh, I'm just trying to see if we've got enough time to do I this. I have time for one more question. Uh, we got four minutes, so let, yeah. let's try and do this quickly yeah. then. Okay. So the parent that loaned the money for the bus no longer needs the bus on Fridays. It's a nice okay? parent. Lovely parent, but it's a sneaky. Says, but I tell you what, you pay me an extra thousand rand a day, and I'll give you the bus on Fridays. Is it worth it? Well, let's go right back. How much profit did they make a day? Remember we worked that out? Yes. And you said it was, yeah, because I know you're typing away there frantically. I think I may have deleted it. Please don't. Okay, she yes. deleted it. That's I've fantastic. So let's just go here quickly. <laughs> so we said uh, that four days was it a the week. 64 and 29 cents. Was it that one? No, no not at it all. It was all those other numbers from, from way back when that I raised. All right, so if we did that in four days, we're going to divide it by four. Our daily profit is 731 Rand and 36 cents. Okay, that's the daily profit. So if the parent says to them, now I'll give you the bus for another day, but you give me a thousand rand, well, you know what, it's not going to be worth it. Because if we're only making 731 rand a day, but he wants a thousand rand, you know what I'm going to say to this parent, you know what, it's okay, you keep the bus on Fridays, it's absolutely fine. You know, I'm actually devastated that we haven't got through everything that we had to get through. In fact, we haven't got halfway um, through the stuff that I'd planned us to do, which is absolutely horrific. Because the next phase is kind of important, where we look at interest, and we look at compound interest and simple interest. And that's a huge section in your exam. So hopefully our producer is going to give us a little bit of time next week, and we'll be able to take a little bit of time out of the grade 12 thing, because I'm not sure what we've got planned for next week, but I think we do need to touch on the simple interest and this compound interest next week in Definitely. grade 12. Okay, Definitely. absolutely. I mean, I, I, I even remember, I mean, I think we met last year while we were getting ready for the grade 12s for the exam revision. And I remember you, we were talking about compound interest and simple interest, and, and it is very important at the end of year, hey? For, for exams. It's a big part of, of your exams in grade 12s. Um, guys... Oh, you want to go? How about you do a little overview about what we're going to talk okay, about next week? We'll talk week. about this next yeah, week, but yeah. basically we'll be saying that when you look at savings, this whole thing of interest comes into play, and there are two types of interest. There's a simple interest and a compound interest, and I put the simple interest right to the other side, because you know simple interest is dying out very quickly. I actually can't think of a real-life example where we use simple interest, and yet somehow it's in the syllabus, and we've got it tested and things like that, but I think it could be kind of fading out that matrix syllabus and the new syllabus. So simple interest is over there, but the important one is the compound interest. And compound interest we can do calculate annually, half yearly, quarterly, and monthly. But you know what? We don't have time to go into all that now. And I actually think that um, we'll be looking at that next week. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for this week, guys. We've had such a great time. See you next week.